Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. My name is Emilio, and today we're gonna to go through the setup of the Synology NAS. This is the DS920 Plus NAS. We're going to get the unit, show you some basics about the unit, how to install hard drives, things like that. And then we're gonna go and set it up and do some basic configuration on our computer. Before we do that, please remember, as always, to subscribe, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date with all of my videos. Let's go to the guide right now. So here is our unit. We've unboxed it. We're going to do some basic configuration. You're going to install hard drives. Remember that this unit does not come with any hard drives by default out of the box. So you've got your four bays on the front, you've got your LEDs, you've got a status, and then your four LEDs for your discs, disc one through to four. You've got a USB port on the front, and you've got your power switch right there. You've got dual uh, ethernet ports. You've got an eSATA if you want to expand it. You've got your power where you run the power brick into. You've got another USB as well. You've got a little lock, and that's it on the back. On the bottom of the unit, we've got a couple of slots here for smaller form factor SSDs. Essentially, it's an NVMe, which is, stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express. So accessing data, writing data can be quicker when you do have these two uh, installed into your unit. You don't have to put them in there, but it will improve the performance of your NAS. I've got myself four hard drives already that I prepared earlier. And then literally all you do is you slot it in, screw it into place, and then in it goes into the NAS. So with the hard drives installed, we now wanna go and set it up. Go and put it wherever you want to put your unit. I'm just gonna do it here in my home lab environment. In a enterprise, you're gonna put it perhaps in a rack or in a server room or something similar. Get yourself your ethernet cable. Only one for now, you can run two. Unit is now powering on. So give that a few minutes just to power on, make sure it's all fully up and running and operational. What we're now gonna do is we're now gonna cross over to my computer. I'm gonna be connecting over a web browser from my Mac. You can do this on Mac, Windows, or Linux, it doesn't matter. Open up your web browser, we're gonna cross over now, and then we're gonna log into the console for our new Synology NAS. So here we are connected into our computer and we've opened up a browser. As long as it's a new modern browser up to date, you shouldn't have any problems. Now, the first thing we wanna do is obviously we, we've got the NAS now on the network. It's connected into our network switch and now it needs to be discoverable somehow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw into here um, this URL, find.synology.com. Okay, HTTP find.synology.com and press enter. This should now scan your network and hopefully find your Synology NAS. Now, there's something you have to consider here is firstly, of course, you have to have your NAS racked. You have to have it cabled into a network switch. Now, whether you're running this at home or in an office environment, making sure that there's no firewall rules in between. And as you can see right here, it has found it, which is great. If it hasn't found it, you'll have to identify uh, what, what network problems there could be present within your environment. In my case, you'll see that it's got an IP address and that is because I've got DHCP set on my network where I've got a DHCP server that is dishing out IP addresses to my network. Of course, once we now log into the Synology NAS, we are gonna give it a static IP because we don't wanna let, you know, leave it as a dynamic DHCP IP. So you'll see that it's shown up. You've got model name, the uh, DS920+, plus, the IP address, my MAC address, and the status which is currently not installed and what we want to now do is select connect if you're happy with that end user license agreement you can say okay now it's connecting into that IP address so if you knew what the IP address was that was being allocated you can just go straight into here throw in your IP address and then colon 5000 but in this case it's automatically found it and now set up so the Synology products uh, sit on top of DSM, which is the Disk Station Manager, Synology's operating system essentially, uh, and we need to install that uh, to be able to get it uh, with a nice graphical user interface so we can go in and really play around with it. Um, you can still access the Synology via the command line, but we love the DSM, it looks really cool. 
You can do a manual install. If you don't want it to go out and pick it up from uh, a different location, you can manually install it as well. But we're gonna just select install now. All data on the hard drives one, two, three, four will be removed. Of course, if you've installed less hard drives, uh, it'll only show up the hard drives that you have got. But all my data is gonna be erased from these disks and we are okay with that. So the initialization is now beginning. Um, as it says here, it will be ready in approximately 10 minutes and ensure that you do not turn off the power to this uh, NAS while this process is taking place. And we'll check back once we are done on the other side. So your NAS will reboot potentially several times and then you're now presented with this screen. If you're not in this screen, just navigate back to your um, to the IP address at colon 5000 5, uh, to be able to access your NAS again. And what we now need to do is create an administrator account for this Synology NAS. So give your, uh, your Synology, your DS920, an actual name. So that is the server name, the username that you wanna give it, the password, confirm your password, and then a little indicator around password strength. It may be helpful for you to set up what's called Quick Connect. Essentially what it says is Quick Connect makes it easy to access your Synology uh, without port forwarding. So you actually essentially create an account with Synology directly and you can access it via the internet. So you can go and create that if you so choose to. You can also skip this step if you don't want to create this. Accept those terms and conditions if you accept them. Acknowledge that you have understood the privacy statement. You're all set, let's take a tour. Got it, device analytics. We are okay with that. And it gives you a little bit of an overview here. You've got your package center for getting all your apps and configuring some apps, control panel, file station, and then some further help. So you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, you've got some stuff there around the system health uh, and you can customize this, you can drag it along, you can add and remove, but this really is the operating system as a whole and all the desktop icons and applications that you can see right here. You can go ahead and add further things by going into the package center right here. And this is really like an app store where you can go and download additional applications to make your Synology NAS even better. Remember, this is not just a NAS for storing files. You can actually do a lot more with it. You've got your little uh, main menu. Think of this as your uh, start menu on Windows or your, you know, your dock down the bottom on your Mac. Uh, you've got access to all of your stuff right from here. You've got file station within control panel. You've got a few different options. You've got all your shared folders. You can configure your shared folders. You've got file services, your SMB, FTP, TFTP, rsync, uh, advanced. Uh, you've got your users and your groups. So you'll see that it's a user that I created before, as well as my admin, uh, my groups. If I wanna have groups of users within particular groups for allowing different access, domain and LDAP. So if you wanna have uh, AD, uh, authentication and connectivity. Under network, you've got here your, the name of your Synology NAS, uh, as well as a default gateway. You've got network interface, and that is my LAN port that we have set up. Let's just uh, close these off. And if I drop down, you'll see that here is all the information about my particular uh, network point that I've configured, and it's getting that IP address over DHCP, which is yes. So the first thing that I would recommend is give it a static IP. You can go into edit, use manual configuration and assign a static IP to it. Something that is nice to see is the info center. It gives you a nice snapshot of everything that is going on. It includes the serial number, the model name, uh, you know, what the, the, the CPU, the RAM, etc., on your actual device. Under storage, you'll see my four hard drives. So these are one, two, three, four hard drives, which were three terabytes each and you've got the status there being initialized. Under services is actually quite helpful. Do you want to be able to enable certain services? Yes or no. So if you want to be able to have FTP, you can turn FTP on. If you want SFTP for secure, turn it on for rsync, for syncing between NASs, things like that. Um, do you want to be able to have SMB? Uh, you know, yes or no. AFP, which is Apple's file protocol. NFS, which is the protocol that's used also on Apple, but also across Linux and a few different other options there. And there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do right on here. You can change the theme, some other configurations. You can set schedules. Uh, you can update the unit. You can reset it. 
Uh, there is so much stuff that you can still do on this Synology NAS. Now under our little main menu here, so we had control panel, we've got file station, you've got some other options. What's important is this storage manager. So we want to go and configure our groups of disks, etc., etc. So you see that everything looks healthy, everything looks fine, but there are currently no volumes, there are no storage pools because all we've got is four drives that are currently unused. Under the hard drive SSD option, you see my four drives. You can locate drives, so a little LED, other information around the logs and how the things are going, how they're tracking, whether they're healthy, uh, what the temperature is. So let's go and create a volume first. So there are two options here. You've got Quick, which essentially uses a Synology hybrid RAID, uh, if you do want to use that, or you can do custom and you can go and configure your own RAID types. I personally prefer the custom option, so I'm gonna go and select the custom option. I'm gonna create a new storage pool, so you can do that by creating one here first, but we're gonna create a brand new storage pool. How do we wanna optimize our particular uh, storage pool? So you've got better performance or higher flexibility. The first one really uses traditional RAID, so RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10, etc. The second option uh, can utilize Synology's hybrid RAID. Uh, essentially, it's a Synology propriety technology where uh, you can mix and match uh, drives, sizes, for example. So in future, you want to add more drives um, that are different capacity. You can do that without breaking your RAID. There are pros and cons to each of these. Uh, you do slightly get better performance from a traditional RAID in the single volume model. Um, so really up to you which option you wanna choose. For the purpose of this demo, I'm gonna go with better performance using traditional RAID. The Synology Hybrid is quite good and does give you a great amount of flexibility, especially in future if you wanna say expand your NAS when you've run out of capacity. But if you're comfortable with the capacity and you're more than you know, considering future growth, then go with better performance because you will get slightly better performance than with the hybrid RAID option. Give your storage pool a name. It's optional, but I like to give it a name. So I'm just gonna say, this is my pool 01. What sort of RAID type? We're gonna stick with RAID 5, which is really going to give me, uh, I've got four disks. It's gonna let me use three of them. And it's gonna be a parity bit to allow me to have redundancy. So if one disk fails, uh, I don't lose all of my data and essentially I, I, I forfeit one drive's capacity. Which ones do you wanna be part of your RAID 5? Of course, we want all four of them to be part of your RAID 5. Now remembering that once you've created this, uh, you're not really gonna be able to do anything around expanding or adding another disk. So this gives you the flexibility where if one disk fails, you can still remove that disk and add a new disk. It'll then rebuild that RAID and then you don't lose any data as part of that process. So all the data will be erased, yep. What sort of file system do you wanna use? So you've got the BTRFS, letting you do snapshots, replication, uh, quotas. I think this stuff is awesome um, to be able to do the backups, the snapshots, replicate data between devices. The XT4 is used in uh, Linux uh, primarily, as you can see, uh, and early versions of Synology as well can use that. We're gonna be using the first option and say next. Do I wanna give it a description? Uh, this is the primary storage pool. Total capacity will be 8.17 terabytes. Some basic info, summary. If you're happy with that, we can say apply. Now that configuration is now commencing. So it is now building my volume. It's under my storage pool. You'll see a bit more information. Here are all of my disks. And at the moment, we don't actually have anything uh, sitting on there. All it's done is created the, uh, the volume, the storage pool to be now allowing me to be able to copy data into there. So while it's doing this in the background, let's just go back into our control panel and under file services. Uh, now you need to, of course, decide uh, what sort of protocol uh, is going to be used to be able to connect to your Synology NAS. So you've got SMB, AFP, NFS, which are the most common. SMB will be using the work group and this is how you'll access your NAS. So on Windows, you do backslash, backslash, from start, run, throw in the Aguero Synology NAS, which is the name of my NAS, or the IP address, and on the Mac, you can do SMB that, so you can actually go into the finder and connect to server. AFP, you can access it over AFP on my Mac as well, and then NFS, if I so choose to use NFS, which we're gonna leave off for now. So if we go back into control panel, and we go into shared folder. So the first thing you need to do is create a shared folder that you can actually navigate to. So what we wanna do is we're gonna say create, create, and now we wanna give it a name. So let's just call it for now, test folder, give it a description if you so choose, and the location. Now we've created the volume. 
which is great. You wouldn't be able to do this unless you had a volume with a storage pool already created. So you'll see that right here. We're gonna create a test folder within volume one, which is 7.85 terabytes big. You got some settings in here if you so wanna ch change those. Do you want it to be encrypted? We'll leave that blank. We'll leave all of this blank if you can have quotas and things like that. And you can say apply. Now, who do you want to be able to get access to this particular uh, shared folder? Okay, now in my case, uh, I've got my username right here. So I'm gonna be able to say read write against ED Aguero. And now that folder is now created and uh, it's got read write access to ED Aguero, okay? The next thing I can then do is go into my file station. So this is essentially my Windows file explorer, right? And you'll see that right within here, it's my root being Aguero Synology, and then underneath that being test folder, and that is currently empty. So I can now navigate to this folder. It's ready, it's live, but there's nothing in it. So let's just go and create a folder within there, some other folder, okay? I'm very original with my names. And there you go, you got that in there. Let's uh, dump some files into here. So you can upload right from here. Uh, you can also just drag and drop. So I'm just gonna, go, I'm just gonna do a drag and drop. Now within my NAS, I've got Aguero NAS, the root being test folder, and then a folder in there called some other folder with a particular file. So now that is ready to be navigated to. So then if we want to navigate to our NAS, you'll see that I've already got it mounted right here. Opening up the connect to server, which you can access from your finder, go, and then connect to server. I can now navigate to my SMB share. So I can connect to admin or I can just uh, connect straight into here, uh, which is the IP address, which we've allocated to the Synology NAS. I can say connect. There is the folder that we've created. The share is test folder. And there is the file that we uploaded, which is a nice picture of myself. So of course on Windows or on Linux or even from your phone over some sort of a file browser, uh, you can access that directly via the IP address or via the host name if all of your DNS and everything is all set up. So your NAS is now really ready to go. Um, you've configured all of the basic stuff. Of course, there's a lot more that you can configure. And of course, this step right here, parity consistency check, uh, will take a little bit of time um, because it's essentially configuring a whole bunch of stuff in the background. So let that do its thing, but you can still operate and use the NAS as you so choose to. So that is the basic overview. Hopefully that was helpful for you. And um, you, know, you were able to configure set up your NAS. Let me know in the comments if you were successful, if you were not successful, if you need some further help. If you have any recommendations on videos that I should be recording around the Synology NAS, let me know as well. I would really appreciate it. And as always, remember to like that video as well if you did find it helpful. Even if you didn't, like it anyway because it helps me and helps me hopefully record better videos in future. But as always, remember to subscribe, clicking on that bell right there to be kept up to date with all of my videos that I release pretty regularly on a weekly basis. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.